Today at Manchester Theatres, I am at the Lowry Theatre and I have just seen the most amazing um, press launch for Come From Away. It is coming to the Lowry this Christmas from the 3rd of December right through till the 5th of January and I for one cannot wait. I am with two of its fantastic stars here. I'm with Mark Dugdale and Jamal Zulfikar and we are absolutely thrilled to have you. Now, Mark has been in just about every show going. Um, we're talking The Book Thief to um, Come, well, Come From Away, obviously, yeah. But The Book Thief to The Three Penny Opera, Jesus Christ Superstar, The Jersey Boys, Aww. the list goes on and on. Commitments, Les Mis, Chicago. Um, you didn't listen to the end of all that, I, I know, yeah, just going through series. And of course, um, Jamal as well. You have been in stage and screen um, with shows such as Migrations, um, Legally Blonde, Bend It Like Beckham, um, and of course, the insanely popular One Day on Netflix, as well as Banana. Um, for Channel 4. So we are in good company today. I am so today. impressed with your research. You know, that that oh, wasn't you. like just a couple of things, that was everything. Just like... whole CV. <laughs> well, you know, we need to show the quality of the people that we have got coming to Manchester to Salford. Um, so thank you for joining us today. Um, and of course, we're here for Come From Away. So can you tell us, for anybody who hasn't seen it or doesn't know, a little bit about what this story is? Yeah. Um... Come from away. I, I always just say it's a story about ordinary people in extraordinary times. Um, it's about the uh, <laughs> It's kind of no, Matt. Um, I see it as a kind of story about 9/11, but adjacent. Yes. So it's 9/11 is the nine yeah. 12. It's 9/12. 9 12. Nine 12. It's 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 this this the the setting is 9/11, but it's not in New York. So at the point when the planes crash into the towers, all the other planes that were are heading for New York, the crew diverted to uh, an island called Newfoundland, which is just off East Canada. And there's a, uh, the main landing strip is a town called Gander. And it's this really beautiful, altruistic, human story of the kind of stick the couple on mentality that the people of Gander adopted to welcome these um, from the waves. Um, overnight, the population went from 7,000 to 16,000, so more than doubled. That's right, yeah. That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's just a really life affirming story about kindness, altruism, and welcoming the stranger. Yeah. And you both play the Kevins. Kevin, yeah. The Kevins, but you're also playing Garth and Ali as well. Yes. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about those characters? Well, I'm. So we, well, Jamal, you, you've got a different situation to me, but like, uh, so I play Garth, who is someone from Gander, and I also play Kevin T, who's someone, who's one of the main people, always. And it's just so much fun just to jump in between the two of them. And Garth is, he, there is actually a bus strike happening in Gander at the time because he's one of the school bus drivers, and obviously we're living in uh, this wonderful land where we love a strike nowadays, <laughs> so we're well used to being on strike, and uh, yeah, so they, they have to come off strike to literally bust people around and get them off the planes and stuff, so yeah, it's really lovely to play that, like, you know, gander person. Both sides, really. Yeah, yeah. you get to, and that's the thing, and that's not the only cards we play, we play, I mean, yes. I play President Bush at one point. That's <laughs> As you do. As Which you do. Which you know, Oh, he said. Like at one point, I remember I was listening to it and I was like, "How do you make your voice sound like it's vintagey on radio?" He was like, "It's a sound effect that sounds like <laughs> <laughs> actually sound effect." Thanks, thanks for that. Well, he nailed it. Oh, no, no, but I think that's the thing that comes from away. Like you try and sort of someone says, "What's it about?" You go, um, "It's uh, musical about 9/11." But you, you know, but we're like, you, it's, it's crazy. Like, I think. I think it's just this wonderful, wonderful thing about yes. watching like life reflected back at you, yeah. and the audience are going, "Oh my God, that's that's what, that's what deep down what we're all like. Yeah. We're all, we all want to help each other, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful show to be part of, and to get to play so many different types of characters. In like, when taking off a hat, I'm a different person, or putting yeah. on a jacket, I'm a different person. And as an actor, that's really fun. Really as well. satisfying to make that transition yeah. internally within you, like sometimes within a movement. You're a completely yeah. different character, and that's so exciting to play as an actor yeah. and challenging in a way that's yeah really satisfying. But it's done so clever as well because when I saw it, it was 
it sounds like you might, as an audience member, you might be like, wait, what? So how do I keep up? But it's executed so, yeah. so well that you just do. The, you know I love who that when the audience, the audience that can watch the show, they just accept they're given. Yeah. You know, when it comes to that character change, they're like, yep, I am, and they're with us from the, from the word go. Yeah. And it's amazing, you know, from the minute we got, we started Tim Hortons and then it just, goes into this completely different, do you know what I mean? When we snap into yeah. the air traffic controllers and we're pilots, then we're people again. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a great show. I'm going to give you a Sophie's Choice question now. You're probably going to hate me. So, if the producers and the directors come along and say, right, do you know what? We're extending this cast, so now you actually only need to play one of your parts because other people are going to, but we're going to give you first dibs. Which one would you choose? Um, for me, I would probably pick Ali. I really care about that part. Yeah. It really reminds me of my dad and my brother. Um, and I mean, I adore Kevin John. I love him. Why are you making me think? <laughs> What's that mean? <laughs> um, Ali. I think yes. that would be really Because I think it's really important as well, that part. It gives a, a voice to a demographic that was really affected by 9 11 in a very unique way. Um, I mean, what's interesting about both my characters, sorry, I know this is the question. Because, <laughs> no, go um, for it. Both characters are very different. One's a kind of metropolitan, modern city guy, and the other one is a Muslim from Egypt and is really in touch with his faith and, in my mind, has a much slower inner tempo and is very connected to the higher power. But both experience trauma in very different ways. And so to tell those stories and to have those parallels but very different journeys is really interesting to play every night and so satisfying to make those transitions. Yeah, yeah I would pick Ali Bo to ask the question. Yeah. Um, How about you? I have to pick Kevin. I would yes. have to, not because that, I mean, I'm sure Garth's a lovely guy, but I've met, <laughs> I've met Kevin. Have you? Yeah, and I just feel like we have a really similar, similar upbringing, similar yeah. sort of outlooks and stuff. And yeah, at one point he, he said to me, oh, I'm so glad you're telling this story. And I was like, oh really? He says, yeah, because I feel like we're both from a Catholic background and, you know, he kind of like, I think the thing is, uh, what happened to him in Gander kind of made him, he had this sort of spiritual reawakening. Yeah. And you know, I think he's a, he's a gay guy, he's a gay man, and he kind of lost his sense of like church and faith and all that. And I kind of, I kind of really understand him, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I feel like, yeah, I feel like that would be the one I would pick. I love God. I know, I've just been really mean there, but <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, but like you've both given reasons there, and, and it just goes to show that this show kind of is such a roller coaster, right? And it's like we're saying, like 9 11 and this and that, but uh, it's it's funny, it's it's loving, it's loyal, it's unexpected, it's got so many twists and turns. And because you're playing so many different characters as well, do you find that as time goes on with the show, you're discovering new things all the time about it? All the time. Yeah, because yeah. there's so much subtext as well in the writing. And so, you know. You, you notice, and I notice things a lot about other characters that I didn't notice, and you'd think I would have known by now after so many shows and rehearsal and stuff, but all the time I'm noticing new things every show, and it's always keeping it fresh as well. Yeah, yeah. And we've got an amazing team of standbys as well, um, and they, they have to cover for essentially five parts each. Yeah, Amanda and Bree were just it's, saying it's that. It's crazy, oh but one, one of them goes on for the first time, because there's this real, because there's 12 of us on stage, there's this real team spirit, like yes. keeping the ball in the air and stuff, and then, you know, when someone goes on for the first time, you've got their back, and yes. you know, you just yeah. want to lift them up yeah. and, and celebrate them, and hope that they enjoy the ride, because it is, it feels like a ride. Mm -hmm. It feels like we start, mm -hmm. and we finish, and then every, some, sometimes in the middle, we, we get a couple of minutes off stage yeah. to breathe, but, um, <laughs> Yeah, it's, I've never experienced anything quite like this. It's it's like the Gander spirit lives on through the show, yeah, really yeah. does, doesn't it? With but the... I think because it's a hundred minutes long, and it uh, it doesn't stop. Like it just does, nothing stops. Yeah. It's not there's not really yeah. moments for applause, or, and it's it's like that. Those five days in Gander, they didn't stop, yeah. and they were exhausted. And when we finished that show, we well, were yeah. knackered. Yeah. And we are just <laughs> and yeah. actually, like, I think it's so pacey. Everything that someone says is constantly driving the story forward yeah. that it's probably 
quite hard, I can imagine, for the first time you watch it, watch it to just be a bit overwhelmed by it. So I would encourage people to come in. Absolutely. <laughs> just keep coming. Because actually the more you come to, the, the more you perform it, the more you realise about it. The more you, I can only imagine what it's like watching it. Yeah. And the more you watch it, the more you realise as well. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you can take it all in in the first time. Yeah. It's a lot. And yeah. I will also say, if you haven't seen it before, pee before you come. Yeah. Pee before you come. That's really good advice. The best I've ever On stage and off stage. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so funny. I love it. So, so I was going to mention the chairs. Now, there's, the, the set is quite minimalistic, apart from the chairs, right? So when I, I have to say, so I teach drama, and when I saw that, I was so inspired, not just by the story, but by the chairs. And I was like, oh, it takes it back to proper theatre telling, yeah. doesn't it? And oh, yeah. I loved it. Um, so for people who don't know, because they will keep hearing people go, the chairs, the chairs. Yeah, chairs. Can you tell us what the chairs means? Well, in the show, we have 12 actors. We have two tables, 14 chairs. And they are as much, they're as important as we are. I mean, we, we create buses, planes, town halls, um, school halls. Like we, we just create all these spaces by using the chairs, the tables, and, and the amazing lighting. And it's just, it's just testament to like, you don't need these crazy massive sets. Yeah. You just need your imagination. Exactly. And it's yeah. almost like reading a book, like, you know, when a book, you know, yeah. you, just, you read a book and you see what it looks like, you know? Like, there's, there's one bit in particular that is Jamal and I, when we arrive at Gander, and we do the phoning home sequence, and then we get up and we have to walk, and I, we kind of have to walk around the chairs, but everyone's in the chairs, they're all waking up, and I can just feel we're all woken up in a hall, and we're all like refugees lying on the floor, and it just feels like, I don't know how, but it's just so magical. Like, there's a number in it called Stop the World, and yeah. at one point the chairs make a cliff edge, but you totally believe it. Yeah. You just go, like, the, the chair is underestimating all of this potential <laughs> because it just paints all these different pictures and that number really does look like a portrait in motion. It's so beautiful. beautiful. And it's performed by um, Dan Crowder and Kirsty Goldberg in the past, who played Nick and Dan, based on a true love story that happened. So at the centre of this, the setting is dramatic, at the centre of this piece is this really beautiful love story that flourishes and to see that be played every night so beautifully by our fellow actors, yeah. it's just such a treat. We're side stage watching it just like, oh, it's amazing the whole time. Yeah, and I think that like, you know, people keep saying, but that is what it comes back to. It isn't about a big, like, set or all of this, it's about people. Yeah. It really just is and about people. very pedestrian about it yeah. and nuanced and simple, but very effective. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait, honestly. <laughs> thank you both so, so thank much. You. Honestly, you've been really generous with your answers there as well, so thank you. Um, we cannot wait. Come from away is coming to the Lowry in Salford for Christmas. You're going to get Christmas in Manchester oh, and Salford. So excited. Yeah, yeah. It, it's cold. Also, I, we, I, I'm, I was told about a wig and pie. Do you recommend? Oh, the wig and pie. You better have no, a wig and pie. Wig and kebab. A wig and kebab. Yeah, I don't, I don't actually know what that is. Is that bad? I know a big no, pie. a pie and a bun. Oh, is it? Are you, are you from Manchester? I'm, uh, you're what, North Manchester, so I'm Berry. Berry? Uh, yeah, so I'm oh. Berry. Berry Black Pudding, but I've never had one of them either. Is there anything you'd recommend for us to do? <laughs> is there anything you'd recommend for us to do while we're in Manchester? Oh, um, I mean, I'm allowed to say go to a United match if you can get tickets. Oh, I'd love yeah. to, actually. Yeah, that's good. Oh, the tours, they do have tours. If you like football, they have tours of the stadiums, the shops, the restaurants, yeah. just anything. And, and here at Salford Keys as well is stunning. Just taking round walking yeah. around here, it's yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, it is gorgeous. Like, yeah. Oh, thank you both so much and all the best. Thank you. <laughs> We were halfway across the Atlantic when I got a call saying there'd been an incident in New York. I'm reporting live at Gander Airport where the 19th plane has just touched down. Gander Town Council declares a state of emergency. We landed on this rock in the middle of nowhere. My son's a firefighter in New York and I couldn't get through to him. They needed food, bed, clothes. Here, when a stranger knocks on your door, we take care of them. And the thing is... It's all true. 